As you know, Copilot agents have a variety of different use cases and can be applied to many, many different scenarios. Now, if you're used to a series of these videos that I'm doing, we're talking about a series of agents who are able to be specialists in individual tasks across your organization. And if you have not seen those, go and have a look at those other videos I've recorded. Uh, they're either on the YouTube channel under Graham Hosking or on LinkedIn as well. Today, we're going to talk about how Copilot agents are going to help end users assist in the classification of documents. Now, every organization that I speak to have a classification scheme, but seldom apply that automatically to content. So the reliance is still on the end users. But I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had a Copilot agent where end users could request or ask an agent what the classification was for a certain document or content? So we could apply certain questions like, please review the content and classify it using our organizational standards or determine the classification uh, label that needs to apply according to our internal policies as well. And I thought to the extreme, like there are capabilities within Microsoft Purview that can manually or automatically apply classification or sensitivity labels to content. But again, that is based on a set of keywords or a list of keywords or sensitive information types like pattern matching or trainable classifiers, which is using predictive coding to understand the similarities of data. But as of yet, there's nothing built in to use generative AI to reason over the content that you have today, and then either automatically or suggest to the end user that a certain classification label needs to be applied. Now, there are ways of doing this that I'll explain in a little bit, but this is just to show you sort of the art of the possible when it comes to using agents to reason over your content. So let's jump into that. Let's go in and open up this fictitious uh, financial report. Uh, so as you can see, this has uh, some exec summaries in here, kind of uh, our gross margins, our profit, uh, our revenue for the year. And usually a lot of organizations have this. They build this internally, uh, and this is internal only before it's published out on their website, for example, just to show how well that their business is doing. So we've got some financial information here as well. You can see that Copilot has started to kind of give me a summary, but I'm going to show you this in sequence for a second. So if we click on the top right Copilot coin here, we can ask Copilot to do a summary of this content again for us. So it's going to reason over this document in situ. And here we can see that we've got a brief summary that it's a 2024 business report and the highlights and so on and so forth. But what we can do is we can at mention our classification agent and we can say something like, please reason over this content and classify it using our organizational document classification, classification scheme. Now, what it's going to do, this agent is grounded within a very concise and very detailed set of criteria. And now it's reasoning over, in, over the document that we have on the left-hand side and suggesting that this should be confidential and it should be employees only. And it gives us a brief explanation about why it thinks that. So in the explanation, we can see the document contains sensitive business data, financial metrics, strategic plans and is intended for internal purposes only. So let's show you how that's set up. Now this could be set up in multiple different ways. I'm over here in Copilot Studio. By the way, if you have an M365 Copilot license, that gives you access to create agents, not just over in Copilot, but also within Copilot Studio and all of the usage and consumption of these agents as well. And there's other ways from a consumption point of view for people in the business that don't have a license to ha either have a prepaid uh, model or a pay-as-you-go model to actually use these agents as well, which is pretty neat. This gives the flexibility to all organizations to actually use agents. Now, if I break this down for a second, you can see the description of this agent. I'm not going to read this out to you, but also some very detailed instructions. Uh, we're detailing out here all of the different labels and sub-labels I have from a classification point of view. And you can see some do's and don'ts, what I want this agent to behave in. So I don't want it to just spill off our different uh, policies that we have, but give me some more concise information that is really useful to the end user. Key thing to point out here is the orchestration. So the use of generative AI is enabled. So it understands all of those instructions and is able to pick from the knowledge sources that I provide uh, and the actions and all of the kind of chat topics as well. 
You can see that I've got knowledge here uh, enabled as well. So we're pinning this uh, document here, which is our classification scheme. And that looks a bit like this document here. So again, this is kind of fictitious, but really falls it in line with the kind of typical classifications that organizations use. Obviously, if you're a public sector, you're going to have slightly different ones to these, uh, like official sensitive. But this is a very detailed document actually highlighting the uh, classification scheme in depth. It's also really important here as well to provide examples. So that's where the agent is reasoning over that content that I just had and then applying that to the examples that I have within this document. And that is literally it. It takes minutes to set up these agents and actually deploy these out. Kind of the next stage of this, things I'm getting ready for my next demo, so watch out for this, is action. So we can have autonomous agents that can apply actions to content uh, as well. So here, for example, I've got an automation that automatically applies a retention label to that content. And this is using a set of technologies from Microsoft like Power Platform and Power Automate in order to go away and actually use those uh, connections in order to do something automated for us. Uh, so in here, uh, this is the action name, of course, but instead of kind of doing low code or actually programming this, the use of generative AI within these agents is pretty neat. All we need to do is apply a humanized piece of criteria so a description here that's in normal language uh, and that's it it's able to pick out from the conversation whether it needs to apply that action or not and lastly just to show you that you don't have to be a guru within power in uh, uh, power automate or in copilot studio we can actually create these agents over agent builder as well so you can access that through microsoft365.com and then forward slash chat or what we can do here is let me go back is we've got our list of agents on the right hand side here. I've already created a classification label. So you'll notice if you click on the ellipsis, all you get is an uninstall. So if you want to edit this, by the way, if you click on the create an agent and then at the very top, the drop down, find your agent within here. And then we can start editing this. It's got exactly the same description and instructions I just showed you over in Studio. Uh, the knowledge as well. Uh, this is our document. Again, you can have whole sites or folders uh, where we can reason over as our knowledge source. And then I've got some starter prompts. So we can make it really easy for end users just to click on these starter prompts and get the information back. Hope you find this useful. I'll do a more complex uh, version of this agent in the very near future. But for now, see you in the next one.